Hello students, today uh, myself uh, Dr. Devya, Assistant Professor at Department of Chemistry, Institute of Aeronautic and Engineering. So today we will discuss the topic corrosion and the outcome of this session would be understanding the process of corrosion, the classification, different classifications and then their mechanism. <coughs> So here are the topics, introduction to the corrosion, uh, what is a corrosion and all, then uh, factors affecting the corrosion. So what are the factors that really affect uh, the metal for corroding, then types of corrosion, then uh, theories of corrosion, then these theories are again classified like acid theory, dry chemical, dry or chemical theory and then galvanic or electrochemical or wet theory of corrosion. So we will discuss all this in detail. So before moving to the actual topic, we should understand what is uh, a corrosion. So it is uh, nothing but the gradual destruction. So the gradual destruction or deterioration of metals by chemical or electrochemical attack of the environment. So due to this effect, there is some uh, degradation of the material like metals that are used in uh, daily uh, or uh, daily life's applications. So that is nothing but corrosion. So, what are the main causes? So, generally metals exist exists in their ore forms. So as we see, generals, uh, the metals are existing in their ore forms before they are purified. So that is a stable form. So that ore form is a stable form. So when during extraction, so when we are extracting metal from their ores, they are, sub, uh, they are reduced to its metallic state. So ores are so converted to metals. So this is done by supplying some energy that is required to re reduce this ores to metals. So what happens when it is in metal form? It is in excited state. So these are in excited state. So they tend to react with the environment or other factor, uh, factor affecting factors to form to a stable product. So they want to go back to their stable form always. So this natural tendency, this natural tendency of going back to its original state or the stable form of these metals is nothing but corrosion and that is the corrosion product. So as we see from this figure, see these are all bearings that are converted into corroded, corroded metals that are in stable form. So this is why the metals always tend to go back to their states. Uh, forming some uh, uh, forming some uh, corrosion product uh, which is a stable form of its so then what are the effects effects are the wastage of metal so for example if we are using a metal for some applications then when it is corroded it is uh, it will lose its property of that particular application and therefore there is a wastage of this metal then valuable metallic properties like conductivity, malleability, ductility are lost. So as I said before, this uh, properties, metal properties like conductivity or malleability and ductility are lost due if they are corroded. So then the lifespan, ultimately it leads to reducing of lifespan and efficiency of metal. So when we are using it particularly for machinery, if in between during the usage, if it is getting corroded, then we ultimately lose the efficiency of that machine. So these are the main uh, factors, the nature of metal and the nature of environment are the two main factors that is affecting the corrosion. So in that we have again some different uh, factors that is affecting, if, if we take, consider the nature of metal, so the placement of metal where the position of metals in this galvanic series, the position of metals in galvanic series is also important, galvanic series is important because see anode when it is uh, when it form when does it form an anode when it is highly reactive it when the metal is highly reactive it forms an anode and it is a cathode when it is less reactive so what happens at anode what happens at anode oxidation oxidation and at cathode at cathode reduction reduction. So as we see from this series, the active metals are anodes. Active metals are anodes. Unless uh, reactive are 
cathodes. Let's react to our cathode. That is why when we wear our gold or platinum or silver, they are less reactive. That is why we are able to wear it even in different environments. So, the areas of anodes and cathodes is also important because cathodic area, if the cathodic area increases, corrosion will increase because and if anode area increases, corrosion decreases. So, because when uh, 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 anode uh, uh, oxidation takes place, so when oxidation takes place, when the area is uh, high, when the area of the anode is high, for example, uh, the uh, corroding area, corrosion area is more, corrosion area is more, I mean the area of anode, for example, anode is more, the corrosion will decrease because it, it should be uh, the sufficient uh, reaction has to take place to cover the complete area. So that is why the corrosion will reduce to some extent. So then the purity, purity, high pure metals have less corrosion. This is what we have to understand like during any applications in building or machinery or any other applications of these metals, the purity of metal is very important because which is less reactive and becomes less corroded and the impurity increases corrosion. Impurity, presence of impurity like oxides or any other gases will increase the uh, corrosion. Then in continuation, we will see what is the effect of nature of environment. So nature of environment is also uh, very crucial to understand because with increase in temperature, when, increase in, uh, when there is an increase in temperature, the corrosion due, uh, increases, the corrosion increases. When there is increase in temperature, increase in temperature, corrosion increases, corrosion increases due to the rate of diffusion ions because the rate of uh, ion the rate of diffusion of ion increases so the corrosion also increases then humidity and moisture uh, what is the effect of humidity and moisture acts uh, these humidity and moisture will act as a solvent uh, for carbon dioxide uh, oxygen carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide these are some of the gases so for uh, these gases this uh, moisture and uh, humidity will act as solvent and produce electrolytes. So, in this uh, presence of this uh, all materials, it will undergo corrosion. So, as we see from this figure also, the all these gases come from atmospheric pollution, atmospheric pollution. So, pollution causes the uh, these gases to help in corrosion. So, these are some of the effects. Then pH, the lesser the pH, the greater will be corrosion because at less pH it will, it, it acts as an acidic medium. So in acidic environment or acidic medium, the corrosion will increase as the rate of diffusion of ions also increases in acidic <clears throat> then presence of impurities and suspended particles in the atmosphere. So these um, impurities and suspended particles like uh, air or any other gases acts as like a medium and uh, these vapors of acids, corrosive gases like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, sul uh, hydrogen sulfide and vapors of acids increases the electrical conductivity and thereby increase the rate of corrosion. So as we discussed before, this uh, vapors of acids or any gases will act as a medium for con uh, corrosion. So there are the different types of corrosion. We are seeing to corrosion and corrosion and corrosion, but at what uh, condition the corrosion takes place. So in the, the depending on the condition or the uh, environment, the, uh, there are two types of corrosions: dry corrosion and wet corrosion. So uh, what happens in the dry, dry corrosion? it occurs in the dry condition and in wet corrosion occurs in the wet condition. So in dry condition, if the corrosion takes place uh, due to direct chemical attack, so there is no need of any moisture. So the corrosion will occur in direct chemical attack in the absence of moisture. This corrosion is known as dry corrosion. This corrosion is known as dry corrosion and what happens in the wet corrosion it occurs in the presence of moisture so if the corrosion takes place due to electrochemical attack in the presence of moisture 
or a conducting medium in the presence of moisture or a conducting medium then it is a wet corrosion then it is a wet corrosion so it is explained by uh, dry corrosion is explained by absorption because we have some corroding metal my metal so there is some chemical attack so it is going to corrode the metal so what happens what does it really happens there is some uh, chemical that is going at absorbing absorbing on the metal so this absorption will cause corrosion so that is why the mechanism all depends on the absorption capacity of that metal then uh, wet corrosion is explained by electrochemical mechanism a wet corrosion occurs by electrochemical mechanism for example if we see the silver spoon the silver spoon is corroded tarnished silver so what happens here there is some gas like oxygen it will react with the silver and forms silver oxide so this is the corrosion and wet what happens it is uh, this bar a uh, metal bar is in contact with the solvent here it is water so it forms an anode or cathode and it depends on the electrochemical reactions that is taking place that is why it is wet corrosion then uh, dry corrosion occurs in both heterogeneous and homogeneous surface so when there is a metal if, even if it is heterogeneous or homogeneous dry corrosion dry corrosion occurs because the, it is only like absorption ability of that metal for a dry corrosion to take place however wet corrosion occurs only at hetero heterogeneous metal surfaces it means the it should have it should have the ability to form an anode or cathode so it requires two non uh, uniform or uh, dissimilar metals to be in contact so that is nothing but heterogeneous metal surfaces so the dry corrosion is uniform so we uh, i have already shown the spoon uh, the corrosion is on the spoon is uniform it is like the absorption is uniform and the corrosion is also uniform and uh, the wet corrosion is not uniform so wet corrosion is not uniform if we see here the bar is corroded till here only and it is not uniform also there are some gaps still so it is not uniform this is a slow process dry corrosion is a slow process whereas wet corrosion is a fast process so because of this anode and cathode formation wet corrosion is faster than dry corrosion then the corrosion products accumulates at the place where corrosion occurs so wherever there is absorption of any um, uh, particle then the dry corrosion occurs like chemical attack so the the corroded uh, products will be accumulating on the place where the corrosion takes place but in the case of wet corrosion the corrosion takes place at anode but the uh, products are near the cathode but the products are near the cathode so we will see in detail how these mechanisms are going on and how the corrosion will take place so there are different theories of corrosion that will explain uh, the uh, corrosion uh, mechanism so there are basically three theories acid theory of corrosion then dry or chemical theory of corrosion then galvanic or electrochemical or wet theory of corrosion so these are the three different theories that will explain the corrosion of any metals so the first one is the acid theory of corrosion in acid theory what happens for example corrosion of a metal is due to presence of acids so as the name indicates as the name indicates acid theory presence of acids acids so it either uh becomes an acidic medium or the presence of acid around the metal so according to this theory iron is corroded by atmospheric carbon dioxide moisture and oxygen so this presence of for example iron if we take there is an iron bar and if for example if there is an atmosphere of carbon dioxide or moisture moisture or oxygen so from this figure we can see that there is some oxygen that is going and reacting with the iron metal so the corrosion products that will form are iron by uh, bicarbonate then fuoh co3 like uh, hydroxy carbonate then ferric oxide 
ferric oxide these so there are uh, some reactions in continuous reacting with the oxygen there is a formation of rust ultimately that is nothing but ferric hydroxide or oxide so iron when it is reacting with carbon dioxide water and oxygen this forms bicarbonate this forms bicarbonate then in continuation reaction with this water and moisture and oxygen here water is nothing but moisture moisture so with reacting with continuously reacting with water and oxygen it forms hydroxycarbonate and then ultimately the hydrated ferric oxide hydrated ferric oxide which is nothing but the rust so what happened in this theory it is giving an environment containing acid it is giving an environment containing acid nothing but acidic nature acidic nature due to carbon dioxide and moisture so in the second theory dry and chemical dry or chemical theory of corrosion what happens in this so the the theory states that corrosion is due to reaction of atmospheric gases atmospheric gases so in this chemically it will be attacked attacked by the gases and undergoes uh, dry uh, dry uh, i mean dry corrosion so oxygen halogens or sulfur oxides are some of the examples like they uh, react so here what happens for example if we see this example there is a uh, lock the on the door so that is corroded due to oxygen oxygen reaction so reaction with oxygen so the copper is turned into greenish then the other example is assembly re uh, resistor with silver disulfide flakes silver disulfide flakes of the silver so the silver is converted to silver disulfide due to hydrogen disulfide gas so these are some of the uh, good examples uh, so this when it is corroded like this it is really affecting the electronics so there are some different types of dry corrosions depending upon the gases that are reacting so oxidation corrosion due to oxygen then corrosion by other atmospheric gases other than oxygen when it is atmospheric gases then liquid metal corrosion then liquid metal corrosion that causes dry corrosion so uh, if we uh, in detail if we go to uh, oxidation corrosion what happens the oxygen present in the atmosphere will react with the metal so forming some oxide layers so ultimately it forms some oxide layers so for example if we have a metal it is undergoing oxidation like m n 2 plus and gives off two electrons so gives off two electrons this is oxidation this is oxidation so the mechanism is like the for example this is the metal we have metal atoms these are the metal atoms so these are the oxygen molecule atoms with some bonds so these o2 oxygen reacts with these metal atoms so what happens first it adsorption adsorbs adsorbs on metal adsorbs on metal then what happens dissociates this oxygen will dissociate to oxide oxide atoms oxygen atoms so these atoms will then lose electrons these atoms will then the loss of electrons by metal so these metal will give up some electrons and then two plus two electrons these two electrons will combine with the oxygen will combine with the oxygen loss of electrons by metal atoms gains electron by oxygen atoms so this continues this will continue keep on continuing and form some layer form some layer this is same thing we have uh, we have to understand from the reaction mechanism where this oxygen will take up these two electrons and give uh, reduces then this will ultimately again and it reacts again and again and forms a metal oxide forms a metal oxide layer metal oxide layer so this is some example oxidation of brass so without corroded non corroded metal this is corroded 
so as we see there is some greenish or bluish uh, green colored uh, deposition on the brass which is nothing but the oxygen layer oxide layer so nature of oxide is also very important when oxidation starts a thin layer of oxide film will be formed on surface and nature of film decides the for the reaction so if the reaction of the process the formed layer is porous or non porous depending on that the further reaction will take place so that we will see in detail how the different uh, oxide layers will uh, uh, facilitate the corrosion so oxidation the nature of metal oxide as i said before it is very important so if it is a stable metal oxide layer what happens then it forms a fine grained structure and get adhered tightly to the metal parent metal surface so the uh, fine grained one will uh, ad adhere uh, tightly to the metal surface so this is how it is like it is forming a metal oxide layer so this behaves as a protective coating like it will avoid the further corrosion of that metal further corrosion of that metal so example is like aluminium antimony lead and copper for example as we know aluminium once it forms aluminium oxide it doesn't react again so that itself acts as a protecting layer for uh, uh, avoiding further corrosion of that metal unstable metal oxide so what happens in the unstable metal oxide the oxide layer uh, formed it decomposes back to metal and oxygen so it is unstable by the name itself we should understand that metal oxide layer that is formed is unstable so it will go back to metal and oxygen metal and oxygen so examples are silver gold platinum so they do not undergo oxidation corrosion so it will not uh, proceed further oxidation of any uh, any more like further oxidation or corrosion so then volatile metal oxide so what happens in the volatile metal oxide layer oxide layer is volatile volatile is like evaporating it evaporates so which is in nature evaporates and thereby leaving underlying metal exposed for further corrosion so in this for example molybdenum when it is exposed for atmospheric air it gets oxidized so for metal then oxygen it forms volatile metal oxide volatile metal oxide so evaporating this layer gets evaporated so again the metal is exposed to further corrosion again it is exposed to further corrosion example is molybdenum trioxide porous metal oxide layer then porous metal oxide if the metal oxide is porous for example metal layer is forming which is porous it has some porosity or holes or the feasibility of uh, oxygen to go then it uh, contains a crack so the atmospheric oxygen penetrates and corrodes the metal so there is an always scope for the oxygen to penetrate into the metal and corrodes further so example is lithium sodium potassium and magnesium so these alkali metals have a high uh, corroding uh, ability due to the formation of porous metal oxide layer then uh, the corrosion by other gases the other one is a corrosion by other gases other than oxygen so the what are the other gases chlorine sulfur uh, are some of the gases that undergoes uh, uh, help in uh, corroding the material so for example if it is a non porous again if it is non porous layer sulfide layer for example or a chloride layer it, if it is forming if it is non porous it acts as protective so example is chloride film is non porous and chlorine does not pass and no further corrosion no further corrosion occurs so here if we see silver and chlorine gas is reacting to form a silver chloride layer which is non porous so it acts as a uh, protective layer that is how we have to understand like porous and non porous the nature of this layer is very important in both the cases of oxygen and other gases so if it is porous what happens again the non uh, non protective layer forms like it it will have gap uh, or spaces to pass the gases the gases will pass and continues the corrosion 
continuously corrosion. For example, in petroleum industry, the uh, hydrogen sulfide gas passes at high temperature and reacts with steel forming hydro uh, iron sulfide scale. So, this is some one of the example where when there is a use of steel in the industry uh, and there is also a use of uh, hydrogen sulfide gas, then we should be careful like handling in uh, handling the say uh, both both of them uh, together because at high temperature it will react with the steel and forms iron sulfide scale. Scale is nothing but deposition layer. Layer. Then um, this is how, see for example, if it is SS, SS key, so it is forming a iron sulfide layer, the black, black deposition is nothing but iron sulfide layer, iron sulfide layer. Volatile, uh, volatile uh, layer. Then in volatile layer, what happens? The metal, uh, whatever the metal uh, gas that is reacting will evaporate. For example, tin and chloride. It forms tin chloride. So this tin chloride layer will evaporate. This tin chloride layer will evaporate. So again, it exposes the fresh layer of the metal to the air, and therefore it. Uh, occurs there is an occurrence of corrosion fast corrosion fast corrosion process fast corrosion process because it is volatile it will form and evaporate then it has a scope for the metal exposure then the liquid metal corrosion there are some of the metals which are liquid in state at um, room temperature like gallium or mercury so these forms for example mercury forms amalgams for any metals so uh, at room temperature they are in liquid state so occurs due to action of flowing liquid metal at high temperatures on the metals or alloys so this will uh, takes place at high temperature because the reaction rate will rate of reaction will increase at high temperature so this corrosion is due to chemical action of flowing metal liquid liquid metal at high temperatures on solid metal or alloy so this corrosion reaction involves either diffusion of solid metal diffusion of this solid metal by a liquid metal or in internal penetration of liquid metal into solid metal so for example if we have if we have a metal and there is a drop of mercury here mercury here so it will slowly penetrate into the metal and corrodes corrodes it forms metal amalgam metal amalgam so for example liquid metal mercury dissolves most metals by forming amalgams and thereby corroding them thereby corroding them so these are some of the examples for a dry corrosion so there is a rule called pilling bed with the rule that that gives a ratio so this depending on this ratio we can understand whether the metal layer metal oxide layer is porous non porous or having any cracks so on so the that it is the ratio of volume of metal oxide formed to the volume of metal consumed so it is a simple logic like there is a metal and there is a corrosion product that is formed on the metal. So this is the consumed, consumed metal, consumed metal. So it is the ratio of volume of metal oxide formed to the volume of metal consumed. If for example, this area is the metal consumed and this area is the volume of corrosion product, volume of corrosion or the metal oxide metal oxide form so this will clearly give some uh, ratio that is uh, which indicates the porosity of that particular metal so it is now it is given in the form of equation volume of metal oxide formed by volume of metal consumed this is the pure metal pure metal so its ratio will under give an understanding so if uh, pb uh, pbr is less than one if the Pillsburg rule is less than one ratio, if this less, uh, ratio is less than one, it is porous. If it is less than one, it is porous. We can understand that it is porous. If it is greater than one, but less than two. If it is greater than one, but less than two. 
less than 2. Then it is non-porous and protective. Then the metal oxide layer is non-porous and protective. If it is greater than 2, if the PBR ratio is greater than 2, then it has some cracks and do not protect. So, depending on this, for bench, uh, bench experiments, we can understand that before applying that metal to any large scale applications, we should take these ratios here considering, consideringly uh, like that so that we can understand the nature of that metal oxide. Nature of metal oxide. So that we can vary the material and then go for the applications. So with that we have completed like second the theory of uh, corrosion. Then we will go jump into the uh, galvanic or electrochemical or wet uh, theory of corrosion. So when metals are exposed to air, moisture, soil etc. Then they undergo corrosion through electrochemical process. So what happens when it is exposing to air moisture? It is giving some medium for the metal to react. So, it forms some anode, cathode, uh, electrode uh, like areas so that electrochemical reactions will take place like oxidation and reduction. So, this is nothing but electrochemical theory of corrosion. So, we will understand in detail why and how it will uh, happen. So, in this process, separate anode and cathode areas are formed on the metal surface. So, this is what we are trying to understand. For example, here if we see in this image, moisture is there. This is the whole metal. The white part is the iron metal, for example. And there is some moisture, moisture on that. So, with this moisture, there is a formation of anodic area and cathodic area. Anodic area and cathodic area. So, yes, these uh, anodic and cathodic areas will create electrochemical cell. So, that is uh, giving rise to electrochemical corrosion. Corrosion always occur at anodic areas of metal through oxidation and releases electron. Anode at anode always oxidation takes place as we know at anode always oxidation takes place. When oxidation takes place, it releases electrons, it releases electrons. So, these liberated electrons from anode, these electrons from anode will move to the cathode, will move to the cathode where reduction occurs, where reduction occurs. So, this is how the uh, theory will go on and the overall reaction is electrochemical reaction giving rise to electrochemical theory of Corrosion, electrochemical theory of corrosion. So, this is also known as wet theory of corrosion because it is occurring in the presence of moisture. It is taking place, takes place in the presence of moisture. Moisture, so called wet theory. So, we have to understand by the name itself like galvanic or electrochemical or wet theory of corrosion. Wet means moisture. So, it undergoes the corrosion in the presence of moisture. So, we will see what is the mechanism of wet corrosion that is uh, uh, the galvanic or electrochemical corrosion that is taking place. So, it takes place in the environment where the humidity is exceeding 60 percent. So, whenever there is a huge moisture present on the surface of metal, then the humidity increases. So, when it is increasing humidity, there is ultimately leading to corrosion. So, uh, for example, here is the anode and cathode reactions of uh, iron. Iron metal, iron metal. So, anodic reaction and cathodic reaction. For example, what happens at anode oxidation? Anode oxidation. So, for example, in this figure, if we see this is the anode area. So, what happens? The iron will oxidize to Fe2 plus and two electrons are released. Two electrons are released. So, dissolution of metal takes place. As a, as a result, metal ions are formed with the liberation of free electrons. So, with the liberation of two electrons. So, these two electrons will go to the cathode. How? So, there are some mechanisms how the uh, cathode will accept the electrons. So, hydrogen evolution and oxygen absorption. Hydrogen evolution and oxygen absorption. So, occurs usually in acidic medium. What have been, when does the hydrogen evolution takes place? When there is acidic medium, when the reacting medium is acidic. Reacting medium is acidic in nature. Acidic in nature. Then H2 gas will be evolved. H2 gas will be evolved. As a result, metal ions are formed with the liberation of free 
electrons. So these uh, these two electrons are accepted by the H plus ions present in the acidic medium. H plus ions present in the acidic medium and gives rise to hydrogen gas. Gives rise to hydrogen gas. Then the oxygen absorption. It occurs when solution is aerated sufficiently. So, if for example, if there is a moisture that is causing electrochemical reaction and it is also having the feasibility of oxygen, oxygen presence of oxygen, then oxygen absorption will dominate and uh, forms oxygen absorption will occur and that uh, uh, is the reaction that takes place at the cathode. So, if the oxygen is present in both the environment, the acidic and, me, acidic and basic medium, then what happens? The oxygen will accept these electrons in acidic medium, water in basic medium, hydroxyl ions. This is how the reaction mechanism takes place. So, as we see from this figure also, this Fe2 plus ions, these two electrons are again accepted by the H plus ions present in the cathodic region and gas, hydrogen gas is evolved, hydrogen gas is evolved. So, the, in, in detail if you see the mechanism of this hydrogen evolution which is uh, occurring in acidic medium, at anode this Fe iron is oxidizing to Fe2 plus and two electrons are released. So, uh, diffusion of Fe2 plus into, so this is the anodic area and this is the large area of anodic purpose. Then this, this forms the cathode. This forms the cathode. So this is a corrosion product. This is the medium. Small point or medium. So the hydrogen ions are formed due to acidic environment. So due to acidic environment, hydrogen H plus ions are formed and following reaction occurs. So these two plus ions, uh, H2, uh, H2 plus ions, H plus ions will accept these two electrons and gives rise to hydrogen gas, gives rise to hydrogen gas. So the overall reaction is like iron and these two H plus ions will give rise to Fe2 plus ions and H2 gas, H2 gas, hydrogen evolution. This is how the hydrogen evolution will take place. This type of corrosion occurs, causes due to displacement of hydrogen ions from the acidic solution, displacement of hydrogen ions from the acidic solution because we are utilizing this H plus ions from the acidic electrolyte. All the metals above hydrogen in the electrochemical series have tendency to get dissolved in the acidic medium with hydrogen evolution. So if we see the galvanic series, uh, all the metals which are present above which are highly reactive will dissolve in acidic medium giving rise to H2 gas. Then oxygen absorption. Let us see the mechanism of wet corrosion by oxygen absorption. So the rusting of iron takes place in neutral. When it is in neutral uh, pH, the aqueous solution of electrolytes such as uh, like uh, with presence of atmospheric uh, oxygen, with presence of atmospheric oxygen. So the, the metal surface develops cracks. So if there are some cracks, obviously there is a scope for the oxygen to penetrate into the metal and cause corrosion. So anodic areas are created on the surface, whereas metal parts are cathodes. Metal parts are cathodes. So this is the cathodic area, cathodic area which is protected. This is again protected area. Anode poor access to oxygen. So anode or oxygen, uh, access to oxygen. So what happens when there is a good access to oxygen? There is penetration of oxygen into the into the metal. Into the metal, what happens? At anode, this Fe plus uh, this iron will oxidize to Fe plus two ions, and two electrons are released. Two electrons are released. So the released electrons from the anode will go to the cathode through iron metal. Go to the cathode. The released electrons will go to the cathode through metal. Through this is metal. Through metal. So at cathode, what happens? The oxygen and the moisture, where whatever is present, will accept these two electrons and form hydroxyl ions and forms hydroxyl ions. So this will give rise to some precipitate. This precipitate is formed when this Fe2 plus ions will combine with FeOH. Uh, sorry, hydroxyl ions. So this Fe2 plus ions will combine with hydroxyl ions and gives rise to hydroxide, iron hydroxide. 
so when there is a excess of oxygen so I'll, when it is keep on reacting with the oxygen then it will continue the reaction and form yellow rust and form yellow rust which is like ferric hydroxide ferric hydroxide from Fe plus 2 to plus 3 and forms ferric hydroxide forms ferric hydroxide this is the ultimate rust that is forming on the metal forming on the metal so as we see from the figure this is nothing but the nothing but the rust ring rust that is forming on the metal surface so in electrochemical reactions uh, uh, corrosion there is uh, two types there are again two types of corrosion that are taking place depending on the metals that are reacting uh, so differential metal corrosion metal corrosion or galvanic corrosion differential aeration corrosion or pitting corrosion so what happens in the differential uh, differential metal corrosion there are some different metals that are placed together so different metals when are uh, together kept together this differential metal metal or corrosion or galvanic corrosion takes place so uh, these dissimilar metals are in contact with each other the metal with lower electrode potential becomes anodic lower electrode potential will become anodic anodic is oxidation again remember this anode oxidation and undergoes corrosion nothing but corrosion this oxidation is nothing but corrosion metal with higher potentials become cathodic and remains unaffected so at higher electrode potential it is cathodic higher electrode potentials it is cathodic and doesn't affect the rate of corrosion depends on the difference in the potential between these two metals so when two metals are kept together the difference in their difference in electrode potential is also very important so depending on that only the corrosion rate also depends higher the difference the faster is the corrosion higher the difference faster will be the corrosion for example if it is a um, sodium which is a highly reactive highly reactive and placed in top of the top of the series and oxygen below this will have high rate of corrosion so here is a, another example like uh, iron uh, the steel and copper are kept together so this fe2 plus ions are forming from the steel and these two electrons are consumed by copper co consumed by the hydroxyl ions present in the uh, atmosphere like uh, uh, solvent that is present in between and gives hydroxyl ions so uh, ultimately what is corroding here the steel is corroding here iron is corroding here as you know iron is uh, both the copper so example for this as i told like standard electrode potential of iron is minus 0 0.44 volt minus 0. Point, iron is minus 0.44 volt then what is for copper copper it is plus 0.34 volt plus 0.34 volt therefore when iron comes in contact with copper iron becomes anodic so when it is coming in contact with copper iron becomes anode and copper becomes cathode and copper be, uh, will be unaffected whereas iron gets corroded and due to corrosion that is taking place so these are the reactions at anodic area and cathodic area the other example is when for example these are positive and negative we can understand that this is less and uh, copper is more when it is like for example when both the electrode potentials are negative so zinc is zinc is minus 0 0.76 volt minus 0 0.76 volt and iron is minus 0 0.44 volt minus 0.44 volt so when iron is in contact with zinc zinc becomes anodic and zinc becomes anodic and undergoes corrosion higher negative is always less so zinc becomes anode zinc becomes anode see here zinc becomes anode this zn will give rise to zn2 plus and these two electrons so this is anode oxidation is taking place it becomes an anode and corrosion occurs and the cathode the iron is unaffected iron is unaffected so here from uh, still 
previously we have seen always like uh, iron is co corroding but when there are two metals like iron and zinc depending on their electrode potentials zinc will be corroding here and iron is unaffected the same is shown here in the diagram see zinc zn2 plus oxidation oxidation is taking place and two electrons and iron is cathode reduction taking place and forms water so zinc is corroding zinc is corroding what is differential aeration the other type of electrochemical corrosion is the differential aeration or pitting corrosion so what happens here when a metal is exposed to different concentration of oxygen we are always saying that oxygen will react and react and react but when there is different concentration of oxygen for example this car tires the metal that is present around the car tire will have different concentration of oxygen while running so there is more and less areas that is forming so what happens we will see the part of metal which is more exposed to air will act as cathode so when it is more exposed for example beneath this tire it is more exposed to air or the oxygen so it is forming cathode and remains unaffected but the other part of the metal metal with, which is less exposed to air acts as anode and undergoes corrosion so this is less exposed less exposed to a or oxygen and forms anode anode so oxidation will take place and corrosion occurs and the other example good example is the pavement that uh, is uh, seen in this figure the differential aeration occurs when a portion of piece of steel steel stays away stays wet longer while the rest of the piece is dry this is dry and the beneath this beneath it is wet so the intermediate zone this zone is the intermediate zone that will undergo corrosion that will undergo corrosion so that is how some uh, so at some places there is bending of that uh, poles uh, or a breakage of the poles or cracks at these junctions or uh, the interfaces due to corrosions so there is another type of uh, corrosion like water line corrosion in the differential aeration corrosion there are other types of corrosions like water line corrosion it means when it is in contact with water for example in this bridge if you see the metal is in contact with water so this is water and this is metal uh, there is some difference in the corrosion so we will see how it is occurring during water line corrosion the part of metal below water line is exposed to less oxygen so this which is in the water will expose to less oxygen and becomes anode and becomes anode and reverse corrosion so when it is below for example in ships also in ships also for example if you see till here the water it is dipped in water so it will it is less exposed to oxygen less exposed to oxygen the oxygen concentration is less so it will act as anode and corrosion occurs which is the other part the outer part of the top portion is more exposed to atmospheric oxygen and act as cathode and acts as cathode forming cathodic reaction takes place we will see what are the reactions that are going on so if we see schematically this is the water jar so if we example if there is a penetration of oxygen penetration of oxygen so this forms cathodic area cathodic area so this is the corroded part that is submerged in the water and forms anodic area this formation of anodic area causes corrosion causes corrosion so at anode what happens the iron rod which is dipped in water will undergo oxidation like forming fe plus 2 ions and two electrons it gives rise to two electrons at cathode what happens is two electrons that are released here will go to the cathode and react with the water accepts these two electrons oxy it reacts with the oxygen water and forms hydroxyl ions and forms hydroxyl ions so this is the mechanism that occurs in the water line corrosion then we will see what is pitting corrosion 
not is pitting corrosion for example it occurs when small particles like dust mud etc deposited on metal surfaces for example if there is a metal surface uh, this is the iron metal iron metal that is present and this is the dust particle dust particle that is adhering on the metal so uh, the portion of metal covered by the dust or the particles is less aerated the, due to presence of this dust on the metal will avoid the penetration of oxygen into the metal so it is less aerated aerated nothing but air pa passage of air less aerated and forms anode so this forms anode this forms anode the other portion of metal exposed to more oxygen of the environment acts as cathodic region so this metal is exposed to more oxygen more oxygen and forms cathodic cathodic area so corrosion takes place at portion below the dust and the small pit is formed so there is a corrosion taking place below this dust particles this dust particles and the corrosion will occur here forming a pit a hole like thing is forming it is not a complete hole it is forming a pit pit is forming due to corrosion then the rate of corrosion increases due to small anodic area and large cathodic area so when there is small anodic area this anodic area is small for example if this is bigger uh, when there is a large metal area the anodic area will be smaller so due to this difference in anodic and cathodic areas the rate of corrosion will drastically increase and the corrosion will take place so these are the reactions uh, the iron will oxidize to fe plus 2 and two electrons are given and at cathode these two uh, the electrons that are released will be consumed by the oxygen and water forming hydroxide ions so this is pitting corrosion thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates